hi there welcome to this microsoft azure video a week ago i posted a scenario based question on data engineering in microsoft azure we're going to see the question and then provide the solution to the question so let's get started if you're new to this channel please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to get notification when a new video comes up so let's see the question imagine you're working as a data engineer and you've been tasked to ingest multiple sales sales files for instance sales 2020 2021 and 2022 that is resident in azure blob storage account to azure sql database we are data analysts that have access to the azure sql database can query the data as a consolidated table to get insights suitable for recommendation to the sales director to make informed business decisions how we go about the task so let's see the solution the first one to do is to access our data set in the on-premise folder now before i go to the folder i'm going to come to this csv file in this csv file i've got this six columns the year region subcategory product name price and quantity and i'm going to come to the folder i've got the transaction 2015 to 2017 each of them contain the equal number of columns which is really important and then i'm going to come to the platform so we're going to come to the portal.azure.com so in the portal.azure.com i've got a resource group that's called my resource and in the resource group i can say i've got the sql server the data factory the sql database and the storage account this is really important Let's go to the fabric storage account, which is my Azure Blob storage account. Click on that. And then we have the storage account. First, we're gonna to come to the containers. Click on that. We're gonna create a container that's gonna hold all the CSV files coming from the on-premise folder. So I can click on container and I can call this one sales. Once I'm done, click on create. So the container is now created. I can double click or click on that to expand that sales container. So I want to create a directory file. So click on add directory. Let's just call it um, sales CSV files. Once I'm done, CSV files. So click on save. That's created. Beautiful. Now I'm going to double click on that and then I can load all the files into that directory so I can see sales CSV file. So click on the upload button. And then I can browse through the location of the files. So I can see all the three files, 2015 to 2017. I'm going to click on the first one, 2015, and hold down the shift key and then click on the 2017. So the three are now selected and that's good. Click on open. So that's going to be in this window and I can click on upload and there we go. So we have the three files in that sales CSV file. I'm going to come here i prepared a sample script basically that contains all the columns from our source the csv files so we just have this create table script and then this is going to be the name of the table combined sales and then we have the number of columns the year region subcategory product name sales price and quantity with the appropriate data types beautiful so i can go on and select the create table and then click on run and when i click on that we have the query succeeded and I can go on and see the structure of the new table. So I can perform a simple select star from combined sales files. And then click on run. And when I click on the result tab, I can see all the columns. We have the year, the region, subcategory, the product name, sales, price, and the quantity columns. Amazing. So the next thing I want to go ahead and do is to launch the Azure Data Factory Studio and then create linked services to the source and the destination. So I'm going to come here. Now, this is really easy to create the Azure Data Factory. Just go to the marketplace and then search for the Azure Data Factory and then create. So I've got one created, Abiola David, so I can go on and launch the studio. So when I click on this launch studio, I'm going to land on this page. This is going to be the home page for the ADF. Now, if you're coming to this Azure for the first time, this can actually look so frightening and you probably don't know what to do next, but it's really easy. Let's go through all these tabs. By default, we have the Home tab. Now, I want to go ahead and click on the Manage tab. Under the Manage tab, I can see things like the general, the factory settings, and then the, for the connections, I can create link services, integration runtime, monitor policy, and so on for the system controller. So, we want to create link services to the 
destination, the source and the destination. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create linked service. So our source is going to be Azure Blob Storage Account. Click on that and then click on continue. We can give this a meaningful name. Let's call this one Source Azure Blob Storage. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose my Azure subscription. This is going to be Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And then I can provide my storage account name. Now, my storage account name is Fabric Storage Account 1. So I can go on and select that from this drop down. So click on this and then choose the Fabric Storage Account 1. And we can scroll down. Not any else to do for now. I can go ahead and test the connection to the Azure Blob Storage Account. Click on that. This should give us a successful connection. Brilliant. And then click on Create. Amazing. So we have the link service to the source. So we also need a link service to the destination, which is the Azure SQL database. So I can click on the new button at the top and I'm going to search for Azure SQL database and then click on continue. So we're going to call this one destination Azure SQL database. And I'm going to scroll down. Again, I'm going to choose my subscription. For my server name, that's going to be Abiola David. So I can go on and select that. So click on this drop down and I want to choose the Abiola David. For the database name, this is going to be the fabric database name. Exactly what we have in fabric. That's my database name. And then for the authentication kind, it's going to be SQL authentication. And of course, this requires the username and then the password. My username is actually located in the SQL server. And I can see the server admin, which is this super user which is brilliant. And then I can provide the password which are being populated already. So I can scroll down and everything is fine. This always encrypted, not required and so on. Just go ahead and test the connection. Again, this should be a successful connection. Brilliant. Click on create. Amazing. So we have the linked services to the source and the destination. Next, we want to come to the auto tab. In the auto tab, we need to create data sets to the source and the destination. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then choose new data set. Now, this is going to be Azure Blob Storage and then click on continue. Now, our data is actually stored in the CSV file, the comma separated values. So this is going to be the text delimited, the delimited text, click on that. So we can see the CSV and then click on continue. So we can provide this name. Let's call this one source delimited text and then for the link service i can click on that and choose the source azure blob storage click on that and then we can go on and specify the file path i'm going to browse through click on that and i'm going to choose the sales container and then we have the sales CSV file directory click on that and we're going to see the three files 2015 to 2017. so we're not going to select anything because we actually want to perform the bulk movement so go ahead and click on ok Brilliant. So this is going to be first row as header checked automatically. And then we have the import schema from connection source. Brilliant. In our case, we don't add anything in the file name. So this is fine. Click OK. So we have the data set for the source. And then we want to create for the destination. So click on ellipses and choose new data set. So this is going to be Azure SQL database. And we click on continue. Now I can provide a meaningful. Let's just call this one destination. Azure SQL table. So click delete that one. Now, don't forget, we have the table created, the combined sales. So I can go on and select that. So from this linked service, click on that. I want to choose destination Azure SQL database. And then I can provide the name of the table. So click on this drop down, and I'm going to see that combined sales table. So we have the schema, the DBO, and then the name of the table. Cool. So import schema is fine. Click on OK. Brilliant. So we have the destination and then the source. Now we can go on to the next part. So I'm going to come to the pipeline. So I'm going to click on that. Now, in this case, we need a new pipeline. Let's just quickly rename this pipeline. Let's just, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose um, rename. Let's just call it data transfer. This is not required, but just let's give it a meaningful name. Data transfer. And click OK. So as soon as we rename, it's going to rename automatically at the top. I can close this panel for now. OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and use what's called the get metadata activity and the for each activity. Metadata activity to get the list of the certain files in the 
Azure Blob Storage, and I'm going to use the for each activity to iterate over each of the files in the Azure Blob Storage. So I can set for get data, get metadata, and drop in it. I'm going to clash this for now. This is not needed. So I can give a meaningful name, but I'm not going to do anything. Just leave it as it is, but you can always rename. It's a good idea. So I want to go to the settings. Now in the settings, we also want to create a linked service for the get metadata. I'm going to click on this new, and this is going to be Azure Blob Storage, and then click on continue, and then we want to choose the delimited text, and then click on continue. And I'm going to modify it and call this one uh, metadata, metadata, and this is going to be metadata delimited text. So I want to use the same source Azure Blob Storage link service. And then I'm going to browse through the same folder and then click on the sales. And I want to choose the sales service files directory and click OK. So everything is fine. First row as header and then we'll import the schema, click OK. That's sorted. At this junction, I'm going to click on validate. So when I click on that, I'm going to get this field list in get metadata activity cannot be empty. Fine. Go ahead and close this panel. And then we can click on this new, we have the field list, click on that. And I want to choose the child items representing each of the files in that Azure Blob Storage account. Amazing. When I click on validate, everything looks good now. Okay, that's brilliant. So I want to go ahead and insert the for each activity to look through each of the files from that um, Azure Blob. So I'm going to come under the activities and set for the for each and then drag across to the canvas. And I want to create on connection, create this link. So I'm going to click on the for each, and then we can give this a meaningful name. Again, let me just call it um, iterate over each CSV files. Okay, you can always give any meaningful name. Now I'm going to come to the settings. Now under the settings, we have only one thing to do, the item. So click on this, and then we'll add dynamic content. So when I click on the dynamic content under the activity output, I'm going to say get metadata which is this get metadata activity click on that and then we have this and the function and then we have the property so i'm going to put in dot and i want to get all the child items each of the files in that um, location so go ahead and click okay now we can go ahead and insert the copy activity inside the for each activity so click on this pencil and then i can search for the copy activity and then drag across the canvas and then we can give this a meaningful name, but let's forget about the name first. For the source, I'm going to click on the source. Now, in the source, I want to choose the source delimited text. And then when I click on that, we have the source data set. And then when I click on open for now, I'm going to see, let me just collapse this. So when I click on open, we have the file path. So in this case, there is absolutely nothing like the file name. So we'll go ahead and create a parameter that we can use in this file name. So go ahead and click on parameters. And then I want to click on new and then I want to call this one file name. Okay. And then I'm going to come to the connection and then I can use that within this file name. Click on that and then I'm going to add add dynamic content and I'm going to see the file name. So click on that. So this is fine. And then click OK. So when I click OK, everything is good. Now I'm going to go back to my data pipeline. So when I come to the data pipeline, I'm going to come under the same source. So for the source, I'm going to see the file name. So I can go on and click on this and add dynamic content. And then I, I'm going to select the iterate over each CSV files, the for each activity. So when I click on that, I want to actually get the name. So I'm going to type in dot name and that's fine. Click outside and then click on OK. So we have the item dot name property, which is good. And then I can come to the sync, the destination. So for the destination, I'm going to go ahead and choose the destination Azure SQL table which is cool. And then everything looks good. We have the name of the table, the dbo.combined cells, which is quite amazing. And let's go ahead and finish up this job. So the right behavior is going to be insert and every other things are going to be fine. So we can go on and click on validate. So when I click on validate, everything looks good. And I can go on and debug by clicking on this debug. And then we'll wait for this to get started. So we're going to see we have the output and then we have the pipeline run ID. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this refresh and then let's see the final result. Let me close this for now. So let's see. So we can see we have the get metadata one succeeded and then let's wait for the for each activity and then each of the files represented 2015 to 2017. 
Okay, brilliant. We have succeeded. So everything is looking good. Now we can go to our Azure SQL database to check it out. So I'm going to come here. Let's come here. So I can go on and just perform the select star from combined cells. So I can go ahead and run. So when I run the code, and there we go. So we can see all data for the 2017. I'm going to scroll down. When I scroll down, I'm going to see the 2015, 16. So I'm going to scroll down. So we have the 2015. I can even click on the load more. So when I, when I click on the load more, I can keep on scrolling down. And then we have the 2016. So this is basically how we can perform this kind of operation to ingest multiple Excel files in Azure Blob Storage Account to the Azure SQL database as a consolidated table. And we can go ahead and grant the data analyst to run queries on this data and then get some insight. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more Data Factory, Data Engineering, and Microsoft Azure and Fabric. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.